Ah, <sighs> the world of Minecraft. Peaceful and serene. At least it used to be. Now, the world is ending. In this challenge, a random disaster can strike as often as every two minutes. Sinkholes that swallow villages. Earthquakes that rip apart the ground. Acid rains that disintegrate anything they touch. And so many more. All centralized and designed to murder me. The only way to stop it all? By killing the Ender Dragon and beating the game. Can I eventually do just that? How many tries will it take? Or will every attempt end in disaster? I loaded into my first run and had only one plan in mind, going fast. With a possible disaster every two minutes, I needed to go as fast as I could into the nether and then into the end if I wanted to beat this. So, I ran. Okay, 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 not that far. I ran about 10 feet from my spawn and got some gravel for flint. Now I could hopefully make a flint and steel and I can cook animal... What a horrible noise. Where is it coming from? It sounds almost like it's a bu Oh no. Yep, that's right. My first disaster of this challenge was a supernova, which unfortunately for me, wanted to make its impact area directly on my forehead. Oh my. Um, okay, well, we are running. Um, huh. After nearly surviving that, I got some loot from a nearby shipwreck. With it, I had enough iron for the essentials, and I shortly found a lava pool on the surface, where I built and lit the portal just in time. Right now, I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I had narrowly avoided being thrown into the same lava pool that helped me build my portal, but by now, night had fallen, and I was low on supplies. I had to finish up my checklist of things I needed before I entered the nether. Food? Gonna need more of that. Iron? Could use a little more. Armor? Could be helpful. A meteor? Huh. That's weird. Where would I find one of- <gasps> Thankfully, I made it back and collected all my things. Now we were back in business, baby. My luck hasn't run out yet. After gearing up a bit more, I needed food. So, I headed back to the portal to see what I could find. But, attempt number one was about to come full circle. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh my god! My luck had run out. I'm still not sure why I died immediately upon landing in the lava, but I didn't have the heart to continue this world as I watched everything burn. I reset. Attempt number two. This was also a great start. I shortly found a ruined portal and a shipwreck with a bunch of iron. That's what I'm talking about, baby. I was now ready to try and enter the nether again. At roughly 40 minutes into this attempt, I found a lava pool underground and eventually made the portal. And it didn't help that during the last 40 minutes, I was bombarded by more black plagues than Europe in the 14th century. Yeah, I can only catch it if I touch a mob who's also carrying it, which just makes it a bit of an annoyance. But there isn't really a lack of mobs in dark underground caves now, is there? With a deteriorating mental state, I entered the nether for the first time. I had 18 gold from the ruined nether portal and a bit extra from some nether gold. So I was hoping to get lucky with some piglin pearl trades. But my ghetto gift exchange almost got cut short. Yeah, okay, I could actually care less for crying obsidian. Um. Oh my God. Oh my God. After that near death experience, I was rewarded with a whopping two pearls. Ugh. And I got introduced to a new nether specific disaster, a soul storm. Can't be too bad, right? Nobody told me this was a horror game. Once I got my stuff back, I set out on finding a fortress or bastion. Whichever came first, really. I almost lost my life over one more ender pearl. Oh my god. 
After searching for another 20 minutes, I eventually found a bastion where I died to no, not a wacky crazy wild disaster that spawned on my forehead, but a couple of piglin brutes who showed me the business end of their beating sticks. Yeah, I've never been good at bastions anyways. Attempt number three. I had channeled my inner speedrunner. By eight minutes in, I had a nether portal built and ready to be entered. I needed some more supplies before I went to the nether, so I headed underground and was proudly met with another supernova. Okay. Luckily, this exposed a lot of ground, and I needed those precious ores. So I headed down the quickest way I knew. A what? But I had quickly collected a bunch of iron, which I efficiently split up. Nice. With this iron, I can make a ton of things, like armor, or tools, or... I've been robbed! That's half my iron! Gone! 40 minutes later, I was back on track from another mining expedition. God, was I glad I had a bunch of extra iron to cook now, though. I can make so much stuff, like armor, or tools, or... Ugh. Eventually, I entered the nether. The piglin trades were bopping this time around. Two obsidian and six ender pearls. I got the rest of my pearls after escaping an earthquake with my life, and we were now on the way to find a fortress. Because I hadn't seen any though, my plan was to enter the overworld and travel very far, then build another portal and see where I appear again. This ruined nether portal would do the job perfectly, so I went in. Close, but not out yet. I carried on. <gasps> no, no, dude, no! 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 Okay, so for some reason in my script, I wrote to remove attempt number four, but I couldn't remember why I wrote that. Oh. Yeah. Attempt number five was my best run yet. This was because I was currently two hours in, and I had accumulated a bunch of things. And all I needed was a couple more ender pearls. Then I could look for the end portal. But two hours of not giving into any intrusive thoughts had taken its toll on me, and I could not contain my ADHD any longer. So when some strong winds appeared, I found out you could ride them in a boat like a magic carpet. Hey, this is pretty neat. And hey, a snow biome. I haven't been in a snow biome yet. Oh, and look, another village. This is awesome. I thought to myself, unaware of the imminent danger that I was in. Wee! boat racing, this is fun. I thought to myself, completely forgetting that my life could be snuffed out in the blink of an eye. How long has it been? I realized as I became aware that a disaster had not happened in a while. Give me out, give me out, give me out, give me out, give me out. I shouted, begging for my life, hoping anyone or any- After waiting for that blizzard to end, Another blizzard prevented me from getting my stuff for 10 minutes. Are you fucking kidding me? By the time I got back, my things had all despawned. You know what else had despawned with my loot? My will to continue for the night. And with that, I went to bed in real life. Day two, attempt number six. I was now refreshed and ready to beat this challenge. Setbacks did happen, but they always do. Like when I got sniped by a drowned who probably won a gold medal in the Olympics for javelin tossing. Okay. Okay. Okay, man. And when I almost died from receiving the bidet equivalent of three fire hoses to my rear end. <laughs> oh, okay, we we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. But I had a new plan this run. I needed building blocks. In fact, I needed blocks to survive almost any disaster this game threw at me. But I didn't have the luxury to sit around and mine a ton of cobblestone. So I would quickly amass my fortune by collecting that green stuff. No, not that. No, not that either. Yeah, that's the stuff. These leaves would be my lifeline. If I needed blocks for anything, they would be my go-to. And less than a minute later, they would prove their usefulness. Oh my god. One quick cave expedition later and I found my lava pool. Awesome. And these leaves will serve as the perfect block for helping me build my portal. That's right. That's right. Oh shit. Stop, 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 stop. No. No. 
Whoever implemented waterlogged leaves into Minecraft deserves to... <laughs> Attempt number seven. I made it to the nether with a fortress nearby. Things were going good. Too good, actually. In fact, because the run was going so good, I started to freak out mentally. I kept thinking that at any second, the next disaster was going to send me back to the title screen. I had to get my blaze rods and get out. The voices in my head were screaming at me to do so. The sinkhole didn't help with my mental game either. And while trying to dodge the lava and get to the blaze, my brain couldn't keep up. I died in a shallow pit of lava, and to rub salt in the wound, I had a splash potion of fire res in my hotbar, which I failed to throw in time. A depressing end among a sea of disappointing deaths. Attempt number eight, a ruined portal right off spawn. Nice. Okay. Some gear and a diamond pickaxe, extra nice. Dying in the nether, very not nice. All my stuff despawning because I failed to reach it in time, that's a restart. Attempt number nine was just sad. I died to three cave-ins in a single run. The initial, the recovery of my stuff, and I survived the third, but thought, wow, this is opening up quite a lot. Let me swim over here and see what I can spot. No. Yeah, I was just depressed after that point. Attempt number 10, one of the worst nether spawns I've ever seen. I wasn't risking it. I retreated. A tsunami while crossing the ocean? I retreated. Uh, tried to retreat. Let's be honest, if all of Japan can't even escape one of these suckers, what am I supposed to do? A tsunami coming back with my stuff? I retreated. Down this time. Oh my god! Hey, it actually worked. Take notes, Japan. A purge event in the nether? I retreated. Okay, we're going back through the portal. We are going back through the portal right now. Right now. You know what? No. No more retreating. I went into the nether and was going to chad it up. I needed to get to the other side. And what screamed Chad more than a speed bridge? Yeah, swift and steady. Keep up the pace. Show them you're the best. That's it. I quit. I'm going to bed. Day three. Getting into the nether has been a cakewalk for almost all of my runs. But I still had yet to see the stronghold. With my great detective skills, I figured out the one thing that was causing me the most problems. That's right, it's the nether itself. I know, I couldn't believe it either. <laughs> you see, the nether is the place where most of my runs have come to die. The nether can be summed up by this graph. The longer you stay in the nether is directly correlated to the likelihood of a run ending scenario. But why is this? For one, the biomes are deadly on their own. One misstep could send you plummeting into the lava below along with all of your gear. The smallest mistake from your normal gameplay could also be run ending, and it often is. You need to be on point with your terrain navigation if you plan on going fast and getting out alive. And while I was confident in my abilities, there's not much I can do if I get unlucky with a disaster. These suckers can strike in an instant, and if one happens to spawn under my feet, it's almost always a reset. But the terrain generation of the nether itself was working against me too. In this case, structure generation. The bottom line is that running around the nether for 20 plus minutes searching for a fortress will likely result in a reset. Whether this is because I died 20 minutes away from the portal, making it impossible to reach my stuff before despawning, or getting plunged into the lava from a disaster that spawned under my feet. Instead, I needed to be lucky. Lucky with my nether fortress spawns, the blaze rod drops, and ender pearl drops. I needed to be lucky enough for a fortress to spawn close to a warp forest biome, or lucky enough with my piglin trades. All of this had to come together, which would result in me entering and leaving the nether with everything I needed in a timely manner before I got struck by a run. Let's see how the next three days went.
Oh my god. Why is it going through my shield? Oh my god, dude. I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it so much, dude. I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it. And that's hardly half of them. But I'd had enough. This requires three sleepy times to make up for it. It was now day six. I was on attempt 42. My optimism, non existent. The joy I still felt for this challenge was zero. No longer did I find it fun to load in and try a new attempt, but instead, a chore. If I didn't beat this challenge soon, I would be calling it quits. Attempt 42 started up, but this run was different. Because I got spawned on a whack mountain, but I wasn't complaining. It was a very cool spawn, and I could get coal and iron quickly. After a while, I made it to the nether. I explored a bit and figured it was the end of the run, as I had a horde chasing me to the edge of the lava lake. Oh my god! No! I wanted to jump to the ledge to escape, but wasn't quick enough. I had little hope that anything survived, but I headed back. And by some miracle, most of my stuff had landed on the same two blocks that I wanted to originally jump to. With that, I wasted no time in finding a fortress. It took me about seven minutes to find one, but I scored big. Oh, what the hell? Because this nether fortress was in a warped forest biome. Now, I could go straight from collecting blaze rods to collecting ender pearls. I loaded up with nine blaze rods and decided to start collecting pearls. Could this be it? My hope was renewed at the thought of actually completing this challenge. By now, I was low on food. My heart was racing, and the stakes could not have been higher. I did not want to risk staying in the nether for any longer. This was the farthest I've made it yet, so I initiated my ultimate plan. Leave. With 12 obsidian in my inventory from Peglin Trades and a Bastion, I had collected enough to make a new portal. In the overworld, I was now determined to at least see the stronghold. I only had 8 Eyes of Ender after using all of my Ender Pearls, so I knew this wasn't likely going to be enough to fill a frame. And when I got there, I would likely have even less. But I couldn't worry about that now. I'd figure out how to get more later. For now, I ran. I traveled far and wide in search of that stronghold. I ran for 72 days and 72 nights. I explored so much that it made Christopher Columbus's accomplishments look like a walk down the street. I often had to name places with whole sentences because I already used Big Dry Desert 300 times. Like here, this is the big and tall, sturdy yet stiff, green and brown, sometimes rainy but often sunny. Hey, why is there so much of this crap here and where are all the panda bears bamboo forest? <sighs> just, okay, just, just give me a minute. I explored the driest deserts and the wettest oceans. I'm coming for you, Ender Dragon. Your head is going on my wall. I didn't even blink at the sunken shipwrecks, nor the vulnerable villages. Not even the most exposed mine shafts would send my focus astray. These were only distractions to prevent me from reaching my ultimate goal. 
I walked so much that my feet got athlete's foot. Then they got trench foot. And on top of that, they got gangrene. And then they were ground down to nubs. And then my foot nubs got trench foot too. But I didn't let that stop me. I survived the sinkholes on land. Oh my God. Oh my God. And the meteor showers on the ocean. <laughs> The hurricane slowed me down, but I kept going. I was getting close. I could feel it. And after exploring the deepest of caves, I found it. I quickly found a corner of the dungeon and made a bed to set my spawn. I ended up digging into the portal room. The hallway ceilings of the dungeon were at an extreme risk of killing me from a cave-in, if one struck. I wasn't taking any chances. I looked to see how many eyes the portal had. Empty. That means I needed 12 eyes of ender total to make the portal. I only had four. I had to enter the nether again. I didn't have much choice. I used the lava from the end portal to make another portal. And I escaped just before the horde entered my room. Holy shit. I had gotten so lucky. Another warp forest. Inches away from my portal. I just had to be careful. I still had no idea what disasters the end had in store for me. It took me 20 more minutes before I had the pearls I needed. This was because my ender pearl drop luck became non-existent. And I got lost. The cavens did not help either. Anyways, after stumbling around, I finally made it back. I crafted the eyes and entered. Let's fucking go. Uh, okay, okay, okay. We gotta get to the other side. This was it! One wrong move and it's over. If I fell into that void, it would be the end of the run. I had to be careful. This was my one chance. I would not get another like this. Everything has led up to this moment. I just need to destroy the crystals and kill the dragon. Let's do this. Okay, dude. Okay. Oh my god! I can't wait to fucking murder you. <gasps> no! Stop! No! <sighs> what? 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 Did I win? No. No. It was. It was just a nightmare. Oh, thank God. Oh, oh, I shouldn't have eaten those weird forest mushrooms. At least I. Oh no. You gotta be kidding me! You mean I failed?